This is Sizzy. It's an app for web developers to build and test their websites faster than ever before. One of its coolest features is the ability to preview how your website's gonna look on multiple devices at the same time. It even syncs your scroll position so that you can understand how every component of your website will look no matter where your customers encounter it. Now, this feature alone is incredibly valuable, but Sizzy has a whole lot more to offer. It has a wide range of features helping you to test and preview your website under a variety of conditions, both in terms of how it will lay out on different viewport sizes, but also under different conditions like on a slow or fast network or with different accessibility properties enabled. It's a wonderful tool, but they have one big problem and that's that most people only know about this primary feature of testing how your website's gonna look on multiple devices and people aren't taking advantage of all the other functionality that Sizzy has to offer. So Sizzy reached out and asked for help with a design crit, trying to identify some low effort but high leverage points of contact where we could make changes to the interface to make it feel a little bit more approachable, understandable and intuitive so that people would use more of the tool, find more value in building websites with Sizzy and therefore allow Sizzy to continue growing as a business. Okay, quick disclaimer before I go on, I didn't have access to any of Sizzy's source files. There wasn't a Figma file for me to work off of, which meant that there was no source for icons. So instead of recreating every icon from scratch, which would have been a huge waste of time, instead I just used SF symbols as placeholder, which means a couple of things. First, when I flip back and forth between the before and afters, the icons will shift and it might be a little confusing because SF symbols don't always have the perfect icon to represent some function in Sizzy. And also they just have a slightly different aesthetic. So just squint a little bit. The icons are placeholder. The Sizzy crew knows this. Now you know this and we can keep going. Here we have the Sizzy interface in one of its more complex states. And what you'll notice right away is that there's just a lot of buttons. There's a lot of tools available to customers at this point from plugins here to tools to manage and access projects. I'll dig into all of these here in a moment, but I wanna show you just the before and after of where we started and where we landed. So here's the before state and here's where we landed in the after state. I'll flip back and forth one more time. Here's before and after. Okay, now I heard in the last video that it's not super helpful to see this big zoomed out before and after state. So let's zoom in. Here's a look at the left half of the interface and you'll notice a few key changes. The first big change is that I've actually introduced a second toolbar. In the original state, there was a single toolbar that housed all of the core functionality for the app and it was clear that this thing was getting overloaded with icons. And so what I did is I went through and I just tested what every single icon did. And I discovered that there were actually some logical groupings to these tools that weren't grouped very well together in the existing version of the app. One of the sets of tools that I felt like grouped really well together were tools that allowed users to customize the display of the canvas. Basically, do I wanna be previewing my website on multiple devices at the same time? Do I wanna see it in a responsive mode? How do I edit those devices and change the layout? All of those things in the previous version were kind of spread out and interspersed alongside other kinds of functionality like session management and bookmarks and project management. So pulling all of that out into a second toolbar here, I think made a lot of sense. This one dedicated area is where I go to change how the canvas is gonna look. Because we were able to pull all of that functionality out into a second toolbar, it means we actually freed up a lot of space in this primary toolbar. So just focusing here on the top left, what you'll notice is that there's actually a new big indicator for projects. Now I'm gonna flip back over to Sizzy and I wanna show you how projects work in the current app. So projects are basically a way to set a default URL that you wanna be testing. It also is apparent to things like to-dos and notes. A project can also be linked to a folder on your computer so that you can open it quickly in the finder or even open it in your editor of choice. Now, this is really cool, but you can see here in the interface that this project, in my case, I have BriOS as an active project, is actually apparent to a lot of these other things. It's apparent to notes and apparent to to-dos, but here it's kind of looking like a sibling. It just is another icon in the same row. So if we look back at Figma, you can see how I've pulled that out. And now the project is sort of the primary top left interface element. The first thing you see to provide context for all the controls that will come later. 
So now it's clear that I'm in a new project and I have a, a, the ability to drill into that menu, start a new project or switch between existing projects. Now, the second big change you'll notice is that I grouped some URL related functionality together near the URL bar that was previously spaced apart. So here in the previous version, we have a URL bar, but these forward and back controls are all the way on the left side. In fact, these forward and back controls in the previous version almost felt like they were app level navigation instead of URL navigation, but they are URL navigation. So I pulled them over closer to the URL bar. Additionally, because I was able to pull projects out of the URL bar and some of these other buttons to open the finder and open in the code editor, I'll show you where these landed here in a second. But because I was able to pull those out, we were actually able to strip down a lot of these icons that were sitting in the URL bar. I'll show you where everything landed, but I was able to simplify us down to two icons. I pulled bookmarks out, I felt like bookmarks, I could almost squint and see bookmarks being to the other side here of the URL bar, or maybe, maybe you leave bookmarks embedded here. But if we're trying to build a system that feels a little bit familiar to a browser, maybe bookmarks here as a drop down is a useful position. Okay, that was the left half before and after. Let's go look at the other side of the interface. On this side, we are also able to regroup and strip away a lot of the buttons from the top toolbar, trying to make that top toolbar really focused on high level controls, app level controls, and navigation controls. What I did is I took all of these plugins that existed previously in the toolbar alongside things like app level controls, settings, or help. I pulled all of those plugins down into this developer's tool panel here. And where that landed was in this vertical rail here. So basically I made this sort of right sidebar area, the dev tools area. This is where all dev tools go. This is where all plugins go. And hopefully that association is clear because this is also where you're gonna see the source for a page. So these things will probably be related to code and source management. Now the controls that were left remaining in the toolbar You'll notice three icons here, as well as a button for a feature called Studio, University, Help, and Settings. But let's just look at these first three. These first three are all controls related to navigation and networked performance. And it, it became a little bit hard to group these correctly, but if I show you what this looked like in the previous version of the app, hopefully it'll make some more sense. So in the previous version of the app, there's this button here for navigation sync, and that lets you control whether your scroll position is synced across devices. I thought that made sense here. This is how I am navigating within a page related to a URL. I can kind of squint and see that. But then over here, we have performance and simulations. And these two are related to how a URL is going to load and respond to different network conditions or user inputs. So. Am I offline? Am I on slow 3G or fast 3G? Or am I using the app with animations disabled? I pulled those out here. This, again, the SF symbols are a little bit wrong, but this would be scroll sync, network, and performance. But even if this isn't the perfect set of controls to go here, maybe some of these actually end up feeling more natural alongside the dev tools column here. I still felt like having at least networking and performance felt the most clear alongside the URL. How do I want this specific URL to load? And that will affect all of the downstream controls for how I might be debugging or editing my website. I think you could even get more aggressive with some of these changes here. You'll notice in the top right corner of the, the new version, I still have buttons to help and to settings. This isn't really a common pattern in a lot of applications, especially on Mac OS, where people are used to accessing settings through the menu bar or help through the help menu. So I think there's an opportunity to even strip away more icons, but I tried to stay somewhat true to the existing functionality, so I left those there. Now, this last big button here, in fact, I think the only one besides your project with the label is called Studio. I'm gonna show that here in a little bit, but for now, I wanna drill in on the dev tools part of this redesign. So one big change is you'll notice these developer tool tabs. I've moved to be icons here also in this vertical rail. So we have dev tools and plugins below that. This was a trade-off. I don't know that it's the right trade-off. Basically in the previous version where you have labels, these are gonna be a lot easier for people to read and understand. The reason I felt comfortable pulling these over to be icons only is for two reasons. The first is that this is kind of how the app works anyways. 
if you have your dev tools at this size or you're on a smaller monitor, they collapse into icons anyways, and you get these nice tool tips. So with the tool tips and the kind of existing functionality, you could squint and be like, okay, maybe it won't be too jarring to have those here. So now that's one downside of making this change, but a couple of the upsides I hope are clear. One is we're able to remove one layer of you know, just stacks and stacks of tabs. Here we have all these tabs, then another layer of navigation, then another layer of tabs, just a lot of UI stacked one on top of the next. Whereas in this version, we're able to remove one of those layers. And by changing the way that this active state sort of unfolds to reveal the contents of the sidebar, you know, this purple and white area sort of exposes the contents of that sub tab. I thought that selection state was a little bit more clear. One other cool thing about having this sort of visual indicator for what tab is selected and sort of having that unfold to reveal the entire contents of this right dev tools panel is that I think it will also give plugins on Sizzy a little bit more room to breathe. If I switch back over to the Sizzy app, here we have our plugin section. And what's interesting is that these plugins all behave in slightly different ways, but they're all controlled through dropdowns. And anytime you have a dropdown open, it hides the dev tools and kind of causes like a jarring hide show effect. Sometimes that doesn't happen. So there's actually inconsistent behavior here, but there it hides and shows, here it doesn't. So you have these drop downs, menus, sometimes it takes over, but then there's other cases. Here's a button to reload CSS, which just performs an action instantly. It doesn't actually unfurl new UI. And here's a tool called drawing mode, which sort of acts like a toggle. You can see the green dot telling me that this is on. Drawing mode's cool. I can basically come over here and edit the, the document directly like that. So all of these things behave a little bit differently and even configuring plugins that I wanna have enabled it has an entirely different behavior. It opens this sort of overlay sidebar on top of the rest of the interface. So if we go back here where you could imagine a plugin being selected and sort of exposing that plugin's controls in this right developer tools panel, I think that gives room for the plugin to have its own interface, as well as removes that jarring change where a plugin menu obscures the developer tools like in the previous version of the app. Now, some plugins I also decided to move out. So for example, drawing mode, where you have sort of a toggle, and this is related to how you're gonna interact with some element on the canvas, sort of direct manipulation over here. I thought, ah, well, maybe if you squint, drawing mode actually makes sense as a button in the canvas and display area. Let put me in drawing mode so I can click on the stuff in the canvas and edit things directly. So lots of trade-offs here, and I'm sure some of these aren't perfect, but that was, some more of the reasoning behind putting all of these tools into this vertical rail. Okay, let's press forward. I wanna show you a few more changes that we made in the Sizi interface. Here we are again with the redesign. And earlier I was talking about projects and the fact that in the current version of the app, a project could let you have quick access to the finder or open it in your editor. A project is also parent to some sub tools like to-dos and notes. One of the big problems that I noticed with this grouping of buttons was not only the relationship between a project and its children, but also just the way that these things behave in the development workflow process. So imagine that you are using notes to capture a code snippet, or you're using to-dos to remind yourself of things that you wanna test. Well, notice I keep having to open these dropdowns every time I wanna see what's going on. So I'm working, then I open the dropdown, then I'm going back and working, then I'm opening the dropdown. And I felt like in my testing, this was just a little bit tedious. So let me jump you to the solution that I came to. What you'll probably notice is that there's this little sidebar icon here. I didn't talk about it earlier, but imagine that I were to click it. You could imagine a panel popping out like this. Now this part also shifted. I wanted to show how a project could show its association with your code editor and with the finder, but let's focus on the sidebar for now. This sidebar, I thought, would be a good place to house things like notes and to-dos. And the idea here is that I can have these things open alongside my designs and alongside my developer tools. I don't have to keep dropping in and out of those, those dropdowns at the very top. And this lets me retain that context, copy a code snippet, whatever it might be. And then whenever I'm done, I can just pop that bad boy back closed. Easy, 
and uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time designing the actual notes themselves or the tasks themselves, uh, but really just thought at a higher level about positioning. Each of these sections could be collapsed kind of like an accordion, so if you aren't using tasks or you're done with tasks, you could collapse that and get it out of the way. Okay, one other really cool part of Sizi, if I jump back over to the Sizi app, is a feature called the Reference Browser. This gets crazy, but the Reference Browser is basically a browser inside of your browser. So it exists here, it's called the Reference Browser. And if you open it, you can basically load another instance of Chrome, and you might use this to pull up the documentation for a library or a framework that you're using. For example, Tailwind or the React docs or whatever it might be. This is really useful. Now, the problem with this design and this layout is, you know, this website is super constrained. This actually kind of sucks to read docs on. So you can undock that. You can pop these this reference browser out into a separate window, resize it, that's more useful. The problem is now I'm having to do this window management with Sizi. So I have to keep switching between the reference browser and my work. It's not terrible, but it kind of breaks my brain because it does require a lot of context switching. If I was on a smaller monitor, I might not have these things side by side. And so I have to keep reminding myself what tools exist within the Sizi primary interface. And then, oh yeah, I need to switch out to this other window, this other tool to access my docs. So let me, let me redock that. Now I'll show you the solution I came up with. If you're paying attention, you probably notice these tabs here and even in Figma, you notice them here. And what these are is quick ways to sort of hone in on a specific device at a time. So let me close the reference browser and just show you what that looks like. If I just only wanted to look at my design on an iPhone 12 Pro Max, I can just click that tab and it zooms me right in. You can also have presets, like if you wanted to look at your website on a set of Apple devices or a set of Android devices or anything like that, you can click into a preset and sort of have Sizi remember specific devices, a layout, a configuration. So we already have sort of sub tabs within the app. So I thought it'd be interesting to extend that where you could not only favorite or tab a specific device, but maybe you could favorite or tab a documentation URL. So back on our website, you'll notice here, I have Tailwind CSS and the React docs. And you could imagine clicking into one of those and having something that looks a little bit like this. So here's the Tailwind docs alongside my device, alongside the React docs. And it's all in the context of my project. So I'm not having to window management, it just sort of flows top left to bottom right, where I'm, what I'm working on, how I want it to be displayed, and then documentation. Now, this might not be perfect. This probably could have gone somewhere else. We only had so much time to really think of a solution for the reference browser problem. There's potentially some confusion in the state where the Tailwind docs are loading in a tab below this apple.com URL bar. I felt like this wasn't that bad considering even in the previous app, you can still override the URL on a per device basis. And also this is the project that I'm working on. I know what URL I'm trying to test. So it doesn't feel that disorienting to see Tailwind as a reference tab here. Okay, now let's just take a look at the app in a more collapsed, simplified state. Imagine I've closed the side rail and I close out my developer tools. The app might look something like this. I can focus in on a single design. I have my developer tools collapsed on the right, but of course, if those happen to be aligned to the bottom, they might look like this, where I get those developer tools collapsed on the bottom. And this is a nice state to be in, to focus on my design and just look at how my website might look on a specific type of device. Okay, we're getting close. One more feature I wanted to show you was called Photo Studio. So if you'll notice in the app, there's a feature called Photo Studio. It's currently buried here. And this is a really unique feature of Sizi that sort of gets out of web development, testing and building and more into the marketing domain where I can enter Photo Studio and I can see my devices on a background. In this case, I just have a dark background and I can position my devices and I can record the, my screen showing my website on these different devices. I can just take a screenshot of this. I can change the background. I can basically make a marketing shot of my website in some nice device frames. So this is a really cool feature, but it's slightly different than testing. Anyways, in the current Sizi product, I kind of just felt like it suffered from a couple of the same problems that we've talked about with the rest of the interface. There's just this really busy toolbar with a lot of controls. It took me a while to figure out how they all work together, what the grouping should be, sort of like the logical association between tools. And you know, without spending too much time going into every single one, I thought I'd show you the before and after. So here's the before of Photo Studio, and here's where I landed. Now, a couple of 
interesting changes. I think the first is retaining the URL bar in this context. So if you keep this two toolbar stack, the UI doesn't change that much going in and out of Photo Studio. But having the URL here allows me to actually, you know, capture screenshots or screen recordings for marketing purposes across different URLs. I might test my homepage, I might test a subpage, and being able to quickly switch between those without having to enter an exit studio would be really nice. The second big change is I was able to retain the position of certain controls. In this case, I have presets and edit devices over here on the left. And then I have sort of alignment and device settings and zoom controls over here on the right. And if I show you, you know, back in, in the previous screen, this is Sizzy and we have those controls in the same location. Here I have presets, editing devices, alignment controls, zoom controls here on the right. So in Photo Studio, you get the same position. I'm able to use familiar grouping and layouts to make Studio hopefully a little bit more intuitive to use. Now, just as a thought experiment, in the previous version of the app, let me jump back over to Sizzy, I felt like there's just a lot of white in the toolbar and it kind of got worse in my proposed redesign where I introduced a second toolbar and it was all white and everything was just kind of blending together. So I took one small stab at, hey, what if we had some contrast in the toolbar here? And I made this a little bit of a darker gray. So we get some contrast, not only within this toolbar itself, contrast between the buttons and the actions on top of that background, but also between sort of our app's primary toolbar and a secondary toolbar, like the canvas layout and configuration toolbar here. So one last time, here's our before and here's our after. I hope all of this made sense and I was able to hopefully explain some of these design changes in a clear way. Okay, three questions for you. First, which change did you agree with the most? Was there any part of the before and after that really resonated? Second question, what change did you disagree with? I'm sure I made a ton of mistakes and there's always room to improve these designs. So let me know where you think this could have been even better. And then third, as a meta point, how could this type of video be even better? I really appreciate all the comments that y'all left on the last video for Less Knowing CRM. I've been trying to incorporate that feedback and make this video better. And I just wanna make each YouTube video better and better each time. So thank you for the comments. Please keep leaving them. I, I really appreciate the suggestions. If you did like this video, I guess click the like button. And if you wanna see more of it, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.